let's go ahead and build some saw horses this week. Saw horses are so simple, but incredibly useful. In this video, I'm gonna show you three different types that are all very quick, easy, and cheap to put together. While all three can be used as a standard saw horse, they are all three made with a slightly different purpose in mind. Let's go ahead and get into the first design, which is a folding saw horse. I love this one for the shop environment because once I'm done with them, I love to fold them away and store them on the wall. I placed a handle on the top board to make it easy to carry when it's deployed or folded. Then it also has a folding tray at the bottom to set tools or boxes of hardware on while working. This design takes just a few two by fours and a scrap piece of plywood for the tray. If you're interested in plans for any of these, I do have them available on my website. And there is a link for you down below. After cutting all of the legs and cross members, I used wood glue and brad nails to make up the two leg assemblies. If you're building these for a traveling job site and want the ability to tear them down between jobs, then go ahead and skip the wood glue. However, since I plan to always leave these together and use them in my shop, I apply a tight bond original to all the joints, which really increases the overall sturdiness at the end of the build. If you skip the wood glue, then use screws instead of brad nails on these joints. All right, let's stand these up and get a quick visual check. Yep, looks good. So let's add on some hardware. To make these guys foldable, I'm using a strap hinge at the top on both legs. The main thing to pay attention here is that both feet are flat on the work surface and that the barrel of the hinge is below surface level. I'm using a straight edge to make sure the two top planes are in line with each other. Then using a pencil to mark the location of the holes. This way I can lay the saw horse on its side and open it up to access the inside to pre-drill and mount the hinge. By the way, in cases like this, I'm not pre-drilling to prevent splitting. It just makes running in the smaller screws easier. Now I was originally planning on leaving them like this, but I didn't like how the legs didn't automatically stop at their correct angle or how there was nothing preventing them from just slipping out completely. So next came in the tray. For this, I recommend using just whatever thickness of plywood you have scrap of. I had some three quarter inch, but half inch would also work fine. After ripping it down at the table saw, I used a speed square to guide my jigsaw and cut out the corners, which will go around the two by four legs. Next, I changed the holding orientation in my super jaws so that I could attach a small front lip to the front edge. This lip will drop down over the bottom brace when the saw horses are deployed and not only make the legs stop at the correct angle every time, but also stop them from slipping open when you don't want them to. These are also attached with a small hinge. Then once again, I stood on it to test it out. Yeah. It feels great, but let's go ahead and add a top board so that we can incorporate a handle and also just increase the surface area for putting material down. For this board, you only want to attach it to the base on one side of the horses or it won't be foldable anymore. I recommend countersinking these so that the head of the screw is below the surface and a passing blade won't be able to hit it. To make a handle, I typically cheat and tear off a cardboard handle from a six pack and then trace it onto the center. And that is it. It's easy, cheap, but sturdy. You pick up the tray to start the folding action, then drop it to lock the legs into place. And you can see I actually did a jump test on these and they did not budge. Moving on to design number two. This is another folding option, but in a different direction. These can be used for holding regular stock material, but where I feel like they thrive is at holding large sheet items, since you can adjust the angle of each horse to be as wide or as narrow as you need it. These are almost mostly made from two by material, but also have some scrap ply involved. Working off the cut list I made, I started by cutting all the parts needed to make a pair. There are a lot of repeated links, so I folded out the wings on my motor saw, then used a Bessie clamp and a scrap piece of wood to create different stop blocks. Next, I adjusted the stop block to cut the sheet good down into squares. Since all of these triangles are gonna be the same, I used a few pieces of tape to group them together and then cut them at the same time at the bandsaw. These are gonna be the gussets or braces for the connection at the feet to the legs. To assemble, I stuck the leg and foot pieces in my super jaws, used tight bond original again, then pre-drilled and attached with screws. Next, I repeated to add on the gusset. Again, if you wanna break down your horses in the future, then skip the wood glue. 
but if you plan to leave them assembled, then add the wood glue. Okay, and that is the legs done, all six of them. So now let's join them together. This is done with a two by four connecting two legs together, but note how this member doesn't attach to the same side on the legs. It's actually mounted on opposite sides. While holding the board flush, I would use a one-handed Bessie clamp to hold it in place so that I could move to the other side and get it in its position as well. Now I could countersink and attach with screws. Next, the third leg can be attached by way of a hinge. Again, the important thing to pay attention to here is to make sure that the top surfaces are in line with one another and to make sure the hinge is facing the correct direction. Aww. There we go. I'm dyslexic, so stuff like that happens all the time. The last thing to do on these horses is to add a top plate to just widen the top surface area. On this part, I did skip the wood glue so that when these get eaten up by blades, they can easily be replaced. Again, make sure to countersink all the screws here. These are gonna be the saw horses I pull out when I'm wanting to break down sheet goods. Since the angle can easily vary, it is dead easy to support a wide board. It's worth noting that these would also be great for a makeshift work area. You know, you could throw a sheet good on top when needed, but then tuck it away when work is over for the day. And then I also use it for painting or sanding larger projects, such as this nativity scene I made for my mom. Alrighty, and then the last saw horse for this video is going to be a pretty standard fixed saw horse. This design has been around for ages, but it is a great one. These don't fold, but they do stack. This one has a two by top, but then one by legs and support pieces. Again, plans for all three are available on my website if you're interested. I started off by cutting the ends of my two by top over at the miter saw, then taking it to my table saw and ripping both edges. After cutting a corresponding miter on all four of the legs, I used some more tight bond and screws to attach them to the top. This one doesn't have a handle put in on it because the legs are set in slightly so that there is an overhang on both ends. This gives the user a very easy way to pick one up and move it. While that feels good as is, the last thing to do to really give it some strength is to add gussets. I cheat when making stuff like this. I just held up a piece of board and trace it on both sides along the back. Then I could use a miter saw to cut them to length, then use glue and brad nails to attach it. And then of course I had to stand on it to test it out. Whoa. I might fall off due to poor balance, but it's worth noting, the sawhorse looks sturdy. Okay, and that wraps this up. If you're interested in building some sawhorses, then I hope that this has helped you out. Of course, you can buy the plastic ones or even the thin lightweight metal ones. But the great thing about building your own is the ability to customize them for the task at hand. I love the ability to add in hinges, beef up the material, or make them quicker than what it would take me to run to the store and back. Let me know down in the comment section which design is your favorite, or if you have a specific unique design that you've done for a certain task. That's it for this one. I will see you on whatever I'm building next. I wanna say a big thank you to this video's sponsor, which is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics including illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing, and more. Absolutely everybody can learn with Skillshare. From beginners, dabblers, pros, and masters, I have personally found so much value within their learning community. In the past, Skillshare classes have taught me about different subjects like dialing in my SEO, business analytics, and even video skills. Currently, I'm taking the real productivity class from Thomas Frank on how to build habits that last. Thomas is guiding me to build habits that turn into strong, long-lasting routines, which will help me make progress on my long-term goals. And I have a lot. Because Skillshare is sponsoring this video, you can click the link in the description to get two months of premium membership and explore your creativity. After that, it's very affordable with an annual subscription of less than $10 a month. Members get unlimited access to thousands of inspiring classes with hands-on projects and feedback from a community of millions. I recommend the premium membership as it gives you complete unlimited access to all classes. Make 2020 a year where you explore new skills and get lost in the creativity of Skillshare online classes.